Welcome to Stream Economy, where we deep dive into movies, TV show, and game news. Now, this week, Disney announced it had struck a deal with Comcast slash NBC Universal to take full operational control of Hulu. But that got me thinking. What's going to happen to all those uber popular syndicated shows we all watch on Netflix and Hulu? Where will they end up? And how much might it end up costing me and you as viewers? Here's what we know. So part of this agreement stipulates that NBC Universal can start pulling back some of its licensed content for use on its streaming platform non-exclusively starting in 2021. Another part of the deal stipulates that in five years, either Comcast, NBC Universal can force Disney to buy them out, or Disney can force Comcast to sell off their stake in Hulu. Either way, Disney is going to 100% own Hulu by the year 2025. Over on the other side of Hollywood, AT&T slash Warner Media talked about its new streaming service, which will launch mid-2020. AT&T CEO confirmed that mega hits belonging to subsidiary Warner Media would absolutely be making their way to their streaming platform exclusively. Then you got Disney, who will both control Hulu and launch Disney Plus soon, as well as start figuring out where it wants shows previously owned by Fox to live. That's all not exactly great news for Netflix, who the Wall Street Journal estimates gets about 40% of its viewing minutes from those three companies. This is probably feeling pretty scary for Netflix and also explains why it's pouring around $15 billion into original series and movies this year. Based on all of that, let's take a look and speculate a little bit as to where the most popular syndicated series are likely to be headed. Starting with Friends. Netflix's exclusive and very expensive deal to stream Friends comes to an end in December. Even though the show aired on NBC, though, its distribution deal is through Warner Media. There is no universe in which AT&T slash Warner Media allows Netflix to get friends again, so you can go ahead and slot this into the streaming platform they're going to launch next year. Now, speaking of shows that aired on NBC and are distributed by Warner Media, let's talk about Seinfeld. That show has a deal with Hulu currently, but as soon as Time Warner can put it on its new service, you can bet it will move there exclusively. The Big Bang Theory is quickly coming to an end on CBS, and with that, another massive distribution deal likely going to, you guessed it, Warner Media. Unless CBS, our parent company, decides to fight for it for exclusivity on CBS All Access. We'll see how that all plays out, but I can't imagine Warner Media wanting that show on any other streaming platform, so expect a fight. As for delightful comedy hits The Office and Parks and Recreation, Expect those to be pulled from every streaming platform they're on and made exclusive to Comcast NBC Universal's new service as soon as the company is able to do it. And finally, Disney obviously now owns the rights to The Simpsons in full, so you can expect that to live in perpetuity on Hulu, unless Disney somehow finds itself strapped for cash and needing to license out The Simpsons. That's never going to happen. That's Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video, Disney Plus, Warner Media, NBC Universal, all at a $10 a month average cost. That's up to almost $60 a month to have these services if you want to catch everything that's exclusive in every single one of these platforms. And that's not even counting the cord cutting services and premium channels that you probably already also subscribe to, like HBO Now and PlayStation View. And on top of all of that, you have to pay an internet service provider so you can stream all this stuff. I mean, it is not cheap and it is not good. At least, I don't think so. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know how all of this is going to shake out, but I can say it is going to hurt the wallets of all of us who get FOMO when we want to watch classic or new TV shows that are going to be exclusive to every single one of these platforms. We should have been more careful about what we wished for. And by that, I mean, maybe a la carte everything wasn't such a great idea. I don't know. Sarah's, what's your take? <sighs> Where are we heading with this stuff, folks? Where are we heading? And then when you turn your telly on in the morning, and you're like, I like to watch something. What am I going to watch? Or you turn your telly on at night. What am I going to watch? What am I going to check out tonight? Oh, I have to scroll through 50 channels. Oh, what? What's on? What's on? This one? What's on? This one's on Channel 5. What's on? This one? What's on MTV? Blah, 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 blah. No! See, it was good for a while, wasn't it? Netflix, that's all you need is Netflix. Now what do you need? Disney Plus. You need Amazon Prime. You need Hulu. I 
just want everything to be on Netflix. Everything to be on Netflix. It takes me hours to decide something to watch. Hours! But it's even worse than the old telly days. At least in the old telly days, you have to sit down and watch it at 10 p.m. or whatever. Can I watch Lost, right? Disney, just buy everything and put it on one big giant service. Just do it. Just end it. I've done with it. Alright. Okay, Disney, thanks. I'm sorry. Bye. See you later. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, according to my doctors, I have to deal with this. So we're gonna be putting Stream Economy on hiatus for a while. But thank you for checking out the show. You can check out more Stream Economy right over here. Here's some content that you might enjoy. And until I see you again on Stream Economy, be good streamers. Bye guys.